this week, back at it, back doing a little vlog situation where I just talk about what I do and what I've learned, and if it helps you, great. If not, great too. We can all still be friends. So the last time I did this, we were talking about mixing dialogue, specifically processing dialogue only for video. Well, this week I want to take that a step further and, and talk about mixing that process dialogue into your actual video timeline. The music and sound effects and everything need to be mixed in to match the new amplitude and sound and color of the dialogue. So we'll head right back into Premiere Pro here. We got our project from last week all pulled up. The new dialogue is now in place. Let me put my headphones on so that I can listen with you. Let's hear how this sounds. Uh, this project it, it didn't have music or, or much at the beginning. It was just dialogue, so we don't have to really worry about it there. On Saturday, October 11th, 2014. So um, let's just look at, let's look at the first section of heavy dialogue and sound effects. We'll come over here, it was about 40 seconds in. We have music track down here on the bottom, three sound effect tracks and the dialogue. So let's listen to the sound effects by themselves. We'll solo them out. This is what they sound like. So by themselves, make sure there's a nice clean mix there. I mean, you can start by pulling back the levels of everything, except for one. Play that again and mix in the second one that's constant there. We're trying to emulate the sound of inside an airplane cabin. And finally, bring in the level of this like beep, airplane beep. Okay, so I like those and they're, they're not too loud. They're not overpowering anything. Let's see what it sounds like with the dialogue. No music yet. We were pretty shocked, but we just put our, our masks on and, and prepared for what was next. We had no idea what it was. No one was telling us. What so when you like that, I always, I always mix uh, dialogue and effects first because those are crucial for storytelling. The music is this like last piece that's, that's telling you how to feel. And so I always mix that in last because in some ways it's the most important, in some ways it's the least important. So quick aside, when I'm mixing like a full music track into a project, I usually go to the very loudest point of the music, the highest amplitude point, mix that where it's perfect, and then I'll use keyframes to automate the rest of the track to fit. Take a look here at Premiere again before we get back into this. These music tracks have been chopped way up, you know, split into different sections, taking the original track and making it fit my project. Very common, but you gotta be very careful with how you mix that. So back in here, we're gonna slowly mix the music into our dialogue and our sound effects shocked but we just put our, our masks on and and prepared for what was next we had no idea what it was no one was telling us what was going on and so we got a little hot there gonna bring that back a little and we were pretty shocked but we just put our our masks on and and prepared for what was next we had no idea what it was no one was telling us what was going on and the plane started to go down even faster so then we move to your next section where you've got sound effects listen to what that sounds like this is this is it And you can go in again individually. Listen what you got. That's kind of a funny sound on its own. It's the magic of filmmaking. Okay, so that's basically that when you're looking at other sounds. Here is another example that would involve B-roll audio. So this audio right here in uh, the Premiere timeline is actually the audio from the footage that we're seeing. So let's just listen through that alone with no music, no dialogue. So you can tell it's probably gonna be a little hot. This hasn't been mixed at all. Um, and when we have the music track down here, that's already at full blast. We'll solo that too, just hear what it sounds like with no dialogue. So I can tell you right away, both are gonna have to come way down. So let's unsolo everything. We're gonna listen to the dialogue here. Uh, we're gonna mute out the music. Let's pull that to zero and start mixing the sound effects first. Uh, the products we make here are designed and used to save people's lives. We'll go over some of these that were really loud. That, that they follow all the procedures, the work instructions. And I thought it would be a very instructions. And I thought it would be a very good message for them to hear it from someone 
procedures and working. So basically that's it. And like we did before, we're gonna fade in the music now on top of everything. We make ear are designed and used to save people's lives. And that it is very important mixed. that they produce mixed. very- Consider it mixed. So that's actually it. I mean, it's really not that complicated. Um, as long as you know how to use your tools here, you know, these faders in Premiere, well, they're not faders, they're lines, but they act as faders for music clips. If those aren't doing it for you, if you need to go up or down more than six decibels, you gotta go up to the clip mixer or do a gain adjustment. There are many ways around that. Um, but what we're gonna talk about now is the actual track mixer window. So up here on the top left of Premiere is where your tracks are mixed, not clips. Remember, Clips is going to look at the individual clips in the timeline. The track mixer looks at it like it's a console. Yeah, we got, what, eight tracks of audio here. We got eight faders up here. So it's actually a really helpful tool uh, if you're being audio-minded because this is going to make changes across the whole project, and that's why it's so important. If you're in a rush, sometimes it's easiest to mix your dialogue by just putting different effects on these channel strips instead of bringing it out of Premiere back in. What I'm going to talk about here is mastering, and I know that Many of you who've been watching this and commenting, you're pretty new to audio, so I'm not gonna get crazy technical on mastering, but this is the process of what I would call, and many people would call, gluing it all together. And it involves really just three things, compression, EQ, and limiting. So let's just go to our master fader here. This is where all your audio, all your signals are coming out this master output fader. Let's start by bringing a compressor, and for the sake of teaching, or whatever you wanna call this, I'm actually gonna use the stock plugins that come with Premiere Pro just to show you how those work. So let's pull in a compressor here and let's listen to our project. Systems, yeah? I always emphasize with my people that uh, uh, the products we make here are designed and used to save people's lives. So this is not the most high quality compressor, but if it's all you got, great, it's, it's good. So listen to the difference. We're gonna bypass it and listen to the dynamics of how everything interacts. We make ear are designed and used to save people's lives. And that it is very important that they produce very high quality product and that uh, for doing that or in doing that, that's... So it's subtle, but it's crucial, especially if your project is gonna be played live at an event, which is common in the videography world. If you are producing something to be at an event, uh, you know, loud event speakers, if you don't compress on the mastering channel or on the, the output channel, the dynamics in the room can get out of control. And people don't notice because we all have just settled for terrible audio in our lives. So start with a compressor. Four to one ratio is a great mastering setting. Bring your threshold to just underneath your uh, peak points. So the next thing I would say, it'd be EQ. And I'm still gonna use the stock EQ here just to, you know, not to use something that no one has. Here are designed and used to save people's lives. And that it is He'd say do a hard low cut on everything in case anything slips through. You don't want any of that nasty low end rumble that's just gonna muddy up the whole project. And usually in mastering, the only things I will do if there's problem spots, I'll pull down at those problem spots and add a little air on top or presence, which is just boosting above 10,000 hertz. It's very important that they produce very high quality product and that uh, for doing that or in doing that, that they follow all the procedures and work instructions. And I thought it would be- So I boost it on the high end, give it a little air and presence. Again, very, very subtle and pulled down a little of the muddiness down there between 400 and 800 Hertz. The final thing I would do on the output channel strip would be limiting. And this isn't like music where you're trying to blast the levels up. It's more of a protection for yourself and just a gentle boost in those levels. So you wanna set your maximum amplitude. That's the, that's the ceiling. That's, that's the threshold that the uh, amplitudes will not cross on a limiter. And I usually go between 0 0.03, or sorry, 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 dB. And then this one is a little different. Instead of a threshold, the language here is input boost, same thing. Give it about three decibels of input boost and see what that sounds like. Hands meeting and uh, it was a, a really a fantastic experience. And I'm happy with three decibels again there on the limiter. So those are just, the, it's the very simplest way you can do it. Uh, compression is crucial. 
EQ, also really important, but not crucial, and limiting is just, if, if anything else, it's a safety net, making sure you're not gonna be clipping anywhere in your project. So that's basically it, very simple. Uh, the, the more complicated part, obviously, was last week looking at processing the dialogue. There's a lot more steps that are important there, and you can get really technical about this if you want to. All I'm here to do is just share what makes it sound better, because sound is very many times much more important than image. Like always, if you've made it this far, you're a champion. Hit subscribe, leave a comment, let's talk about it. Tell me how you do things differently. Be sure and follow me on Twitter. Um, I'll use that as kind of a way to, uh, to, to communicate, ask questions, let me know what you'd like me to talk about um, or what you'd like to do with your life. Yeah, this is the hardest part every freaking time.